uh, Senator Scott. Um, I, I'm going to ask some questions now, and uh, then when the chair returns, she'll, uh, I think, provide Senator Langford the opportunity to speak, and then we'll finally get to Senator Blumenthal. Um, a couple of questions. Uh, there's a great deal being written about the uh, degree of leakage, if you will, of things that are not supposed to be exported from our country or from our friends that are somehow getting in the hands of adversaries of one kind or another. Uh, how, how great a problem do you think that is? I mean, how much, uh, how many, I mean, is this, is this a tiny share uh, of those things that are most sensitive, or uh, is this a, a pretty significant problem that, uh, that we need to address? And I, I, any one of you can respond to that. Maybe I'll go over to Mr. Mancuso, which is, is this, and, and I realize we got a lot of things in the list, and so some things they're not terribly interested in, but I'm thinking particularly about uh, large-scale chips that, that go into AI or, or other uh, key defense t technologies, how much of that is getting through, do we think? Is this, are we a sieve? Are we, you know, not really a sieve, but drip, drip, drip? What, what, what's kind of the characterization of what's, what's get, getting around our export controls? Well, thank you for that question. Um, I can say this, as the Assistant Director for Global Trade, I think the sheer volume of legitimate trade far outweighs the illicit trade that's going on. However, that small slice is of concern. So what you have is you have folks at this table, all the 20 partners at the E2C2, the intelligence community, all of us are completely laser focused on retaining America's innovation, our creativity, our intellectual property right. We develop the most advanced weapon systems in the world. Because of our ability to create this, we are the envy of the entire world. That also means our adversaries will stop at nothing to obtain this technology in these weapon systems. So with that being said, we are focused on this issue. We are an investigative agency looking at these agencies, attempting to disrupt and dismantle the flow of this technology. Um, and it concerns all of us. Like I said, we're focused. I'm also concerned the day that they don't want our technology, the day that we don't, we aren't the, the world leader, because that means that they've surpassed us and they've become superior. And all of us at this table are laser focused, making sure that day never happens. Yeah, I, I think there's a recognition that with regards to AI in particular, it's very difficult to control the software. Uh, and some software on AI has already been put on open source um, and uh, represents, in my view, a, a, a huge breach of poor judgment um, or a breach of good judgment, and it is poor judgment. Uh, and there are some who believe that the only way we're going to try and uh, keep AI from being used in a, in a most negative way is if we limit the supply of the chips necessary to, to operate AI. Are, are we able to do that successfully, or is it like, no, we, we, really, we really can't? Mr. Curlin, do you have a, a sense of that? So at BIS, Senator, you know, we have been uh, imposing uh, controls not only on entities that are involved in these types of, of diversionary attempts, but, you know, we have, over the past year and a half, uh, rolled out a series of uh, significant countrywide controls on, on China, uh, in addition to uh, parties in not only that are resident there, but uh, there are actors that are sitting in, in third countries as well. Uh, it is a complex problem set, and certainly uh, with regards to the semiconductor ecosystem, where the vast majority of chips are, that are produced offshore, um, trying to uh, you know, identify uh, potential violators is something that, that we all here are, are working hard to do, using all source intelligence, putting together analytical cells that are trying uh, to, uh, to identify those activities, working hand in hand with industry uh, to both prevent uh, on the front side, um, and then if there are violations, uh, to have penalties that are high enough to deter others is critical. Um, we've been doing that as, as an interagency. We've issued um, over a dozen uh, multi-sealed documents just in the past year and a half uh, that's trying to get at this problem set is how do we get industry to harden their supply chains and their distribution networks? Um, and then we're working globally, internationally. Um, yeah, there, uh, uh, Chair Hassan mentioned you know, some of the complications of our, our international partners. In most of these jurisdictions, uh, the licensing folks are actually disconnected from the enforcement folks, right? And that creates a bit of a gap because the enforcement folks don't know what's coming into the system that's being licensed, and the licensing folks don't actually know what's going out, which is the biggest vulnerability, the things that, that should be coming into the system that aren't. And so we've been working uh, very closely. We have attaches uh, similar to HSI that are stationed now in uh, 10 countries around the globe trying to get our, our international partners 
uh, to inc uh, increase their capacity to identify and then take enforcement action uh, in coordination with us. Uh, it's a challenge, but we're using all the tools at our disposal, um, industry, interagency, international, to try to get at uh, making sure that these key technologies aren't getting into those hands. And where we identify it, we're either using criminal enforcement, administrative enforcement, or, or as I mentioned just this morning, you know, we added four companies to our entity list in China that were explicitly diverting um, uh, AI chips to the Chinese military uh, weapons program uh, so that we can alert industry and have them harden their uh, supply chains when they're doing their due diligence of transactions. And what will the penalties be for those those corporations that, that have been, uh, if you will, uh, shipping those uh, those chips into, into China? Sure, so they would be subject to criminal and or uh, administrative enforcement authority. Um, so 20 years, uh, up to 20 years in jail or a million dollars per uh, per fine, um, and then on the administrative side, it's uh, we have a statutory maximum of three hundred sixty-five thousand um, dollars, or twice the value of of, of each violation. Um, and as in the case of Seagate, you know that resulted in a three hundred million dollar penalty uh, to set a deterrence level to say, you know, we expect companies to put in place internal compliance programs uh, where they're they're screening their transactions, and then when they find a problem, to come to us voluntarily through what we call a voluntary self-disclosure to tell us. Because if they don't do it, and there's a willful action or there's knowledge, then we're going to take aggressive action uh, to try to deter others uh, from, from shortchanging and also putting those that are investing in, in, uh, in compliance programs at a competitive disadvantage. So we want to level that playing field at the same time. Yeah. Ms. Choi, uh, who's been the most successful in being able to get the key technologies that uh, are, are vital and, and we have endeavored to uh, restrict. Uh, is it China or is it Russia? Um, we, we read stories about Russia being able to get technologies that they're using in Ukraine. At the same time we read about China, uh, just today we've read more stories about China taking getting advantage of, of our technologies. Um, are, are they equally uh, effective or is, uh, is one more effective than the other? Um, Senator Romney, I would say that I would refer you to the IC's annual threat assessment, which focuses on China's efforts in particular. I would say both of those countries pose concerns, but with regard to China, that threat assessment notes that China seeks to become a world science and technology superpower and to use this technological superiority for political, or sorry, economic, political, and military gain. And among its various methods to do that, it includes um, means to acquire or steal IP, its cyber operations, and its illicit procurement. So I would say China is laser focused on trying to advance its science technology program, and it's a focus for us at the Department of Justice. Thank you. Uh, Senator Langford. Mr. Romney, thank you. 